Compass radial surveys are a really useful tool that surveyors use in real life to find out things about, say, a block of land. Now, the way it works is, imagine here we've got a block of land that has straight fences around the outside, and we want to find out how big the area is of that whole block, or perhaps we want to find out how much fence we're going to need to put around the edge. All you'd really need is to have a post of some kind that's visible, that can be taken with line of sight from some place on the block of land. Now, how do you choose the place? Well, the cool thing about this is it really doesn't matter. This point P can be anywhere at all inside the block of land. So a surveyor can come in and just put his tools down, or her tools, and say, I'm gonna start from here and make a compass radial survey of this property. So what they do is they would put a stake in the ground there and say, this can be point P, you can choose anywhere you like. And then they would take a bearing to all of the important points on the property. Now, how do they take a bearing? Well, they can use a magnetic compass and actually a line of sight to say, all right, from here to that point is 40 degrees, say. And so by looking around at all the importance on the points on the property, they can take a bearing to all of those places and come up with these numbers around the edge. Then they can run a tape measure from this point out to that point, pull it tight, and actually see how big these distances are. So those are pretty straightforward things for them to measure with really quite basic tools. Once you've got your compass radio survey, there's all sorts of things that it can help you with. Now, you should be able to find any internal angle on one of these charts quite easily, just by using the bearings. So how do you do that? Well, don't forget to think through where north is. North is just straight up here on our picture. So the easiest ones to find would be all of these. Now, why are they easy? Well, if this is 40 degrees and this is 110, then between these two, we must have 70 degrees Oops, 70 degrees in here. Uh, between 110 and 210, this will be 100, and so on. So you're just subtracting the, the um, number of degrees between each of these bearings. That, they should obviously all add up to 360. From 280 up to 325, we've got 45 in there. This one at the top is a tiny bit more tricky, but this 40 degree bearing tells us that this is 40, and if that's 325, then the space in here must be 35. 40 plus 35 tells me that I've got 75 in here. So now we've got a series of five different triangles here that we could work with, and we can use the cosine rule to work out any of these lengths around the perimeter. Now, why do we want to do that when we could actually just measure them? Well, perhaps it's a really complicated block of land with a lot of these, and we don't have time to go around and actually get the tape measure out and measure it, It'll actually be a lot quicker to use the cosine rule to figure out what it needs to be. It also could be that you can't measure this easily with a tape measure. Perhaps there's other things in the way, or maybe the, the land is bumpy and you want to know what it would be straight across. So it's still a really cool method. You can also find the area of any triangle using that formula that we've already used. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that from there. Area, sorry about the shine on the board. Area equals half AB sine C. If you know both of these, uh, lengths and you've got the angle between them, then you can go ahead and apply that formula. Now, if you can work out the area of any of these triangles, and in fact all of them, then you can just add those up and see the size of the piece of land in square metres, which you can then convert to acres or hectares or whatever you need. So, in an HSC question, how would they give this to you? Well, what they'd be trying to uh, examine, I suppose, if you get an HSC question on a compass radial survey, they want to check whether you can use the cosine rule and whether you can use that area of triangle rule. Now, in a complicated one like this, where you'd have to use it five times to actually find out the area of the property or the perimeter of the property, they're unlikely to give you a question where you have to apply it over and over again and get the same thing five times. So you'll probably get questions where you're given a bunch of information and maybe just need to apply these rules to figure out, say, one of those triangles. So let's have a quick look at how you would do that. Um, imagine that we've been asked to work just with this triangle over here. Let's just redraw it so it's nice and straightforward. And you know that this is 70 degrees, and this is 48 metres, and this is 28 metres. Well, it's quite simple for you to apply the area formula to this. Area equals half times 48 times 28 times the sine of 70 degrees and put that into your calculator. It's
it's also quite simple to use the cosine rule to find this side. Now remember the cosine rule tells us that if we're finding a side, we need to use this version of the rule, well, that is 2bc cos a. Now this cos a, with a capital letter, has to be the angle that's opposite little a. So this is little a out here. So as we're going to find that, we're just going to do, does it matter which is b and c here? No, it doesn't, because we're just adding the squares of them together. 28, 48 squared plus 28 squared minus 2 times 48 times 28 times the cosine of 70 degrees. Put all of that into your calculator and you'll have the, the length and you'll have the area from up here. So that's how compass radial surveys work. You need to imagine yourself standing in the middle of a field and saying, I'm going to put my survey here and maybe hammer a spike into the ground and then measure and take a bearing to all of your points from there. Now, while we're talking about compass radial surveys, you should be aware that there's another way to make a survey of a block of land, and that's to do a transverse survey. Now, the easy way to remember this is to think transverse means something that goes across something. Okay, so using a transverse survey, it breaks everything basically down into right-angled triangles. Okay, and you can do it a variety of ways. So I've drawn the same block of land here twice, so I can show you an example of two different ways to make a transverse survey here. Now, you pick any two points on the property, let's say we've gone for these two, and you make a straight line between them. Now, this looks like it's straight up and down, but even if this was turned around, you could have that straight line between any two points. Then you imagine that you're going to walk along that trans, uh, across that transverse line, if you like, and every time you get to a point where you are exactly perpendicular to another point, that makes a stopping point and we go straight out there at right angles to that point. So imagine then walking along further, further, then you might get to this point, which is making a right angle. This one, I'm not sure the way I've drawn it, whether it's slightly above or below, it might be slightly below that one. And we end up there <clears throat> with a series of either right angled triangles or even a square. Now, how else could we do it? Well, let's imagine that we were going across this way with our transverse line. Sorry, that's not very well drawn. See what I'm trying to do there? As we walk across this way, as soon as you get to a point where you have a um, right-angled line that can come straight out to a point, you go ahead and draw it in. So these will all be right angles coming along this way. Now, this method here will give you a you can tell straight away, completely different triangles from this one. But the point is, when you add up the areas of these triangles, they should still come to the same total area as these shapes. Or if you are using it to find the total perimeter, the length around the edge of the property, you should get the same answer either way. Now, why would you want to do a compass or, uh, sorry, a compass radial survey or a transverse survey? How would you decide which one to use? Well, this survey <coughs> relies on somebody being able to actually move along this line and make multiple points to measure things from. So depending on the terrain, this might be more suitable. Perhaps you've got a really obvious and easy way to get from here to here. Um, maybe it's actually on a road uh, and these are going out to different property points. Who knows what the application might be, but there are times where you might want to do this one. The beauty of the compass radio survey though, for the same sort of block, is that you can literally put it anywhere you want and just measure all of the points from there. The downside of it is that you need to have some sort of compass or a, uh, a tool that's going to measure those bearings so that you can find these angles. You also need to be able to work with the cosine rule and the trigonometric formula for the area of the triangle. This one keeps it much more straightforward with right angle trigonometry, so the calculations are probably quicker and easier, but maybe getting those calculations in the first place with the measurements might be a little harder, give or take.